I've just hit record just because I didn't want to make it too easy for Havard to edit this week. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Am I, what? Am I doing the editing? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's see how we can fuck it up for you this week. (laughs) (laughs) Just go for it, shall I? Yeah. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn, from Number One Projects and KJ, the tall Swedish guy who looks good in a dress from Crude But Efficient and Havard, the Norwegian podcast saboteur from Behind the Mistakes. Welcome, (laughs) guys. How are you doing? (laughs) Oh. <laughs> Great. That was a new one. <laughs> I'm just thinking, what did I do? You know what you did. <laughs> Explain to the audience, what did you do, Havard? <laughs> Come on, spit it out. Now I'm afraid to say something because it might not be the thing that you're thinking of. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh. So I'm just going to say, I've done two edits now for our podcast, and both times you've made them really bloody awkward. (laughs) (laughs) And this last time you did it with your... It was very funny the way you did the introduction by not inviting me and KJ until you'd done it, but it completely screwed up the, uh, the timelines. And after getting it sorted after about an hour, then KJ jumped in with a message. Oh, you could just line it up at the other end. Yeah. God damn it. Why didn't you say that earlier? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't check my messages that often. <laughs> but that that's the funny thing. But before he came with that blatantly easy solution, I, of course, straight went into, but you could just, uh, you mark the tracks and then you have the... <laughs> the program to identify overlapping audio and then synchronize automatically and then but we don't have any common audio streams so that wouldn't work and i was really digging into how you can solve this technically without just trying to manually align them and then kj just well we just line them up at the end because we quit at the same time so, god damn it that's so easy <laughs> well, i'm a bit brute force in that way it only took me an hour <laughs> to line them up manually. <laughs> the problem is we spoke so much nonsense for 10 minutes. Yeah. There was no coherent conversation, so it was really hard to line it up. <laughs> maybe this is the the starting point for me making one of those uh, clappers for uh, movies. I always wanted to make one, and then we can start the <laughs> podcast with that... Uh, <laughs> but since we're, we're, we all record our own audio, we'd all need to have a clapper and synchronize us clapping them. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be hard over video. <laughs> well, if you, well, if you start uh, saving the video, that will make it easier because then you can match the frames of the video. Yeah. <laughs> or we just don't have a head start. <laughs> yeah, I can add that later. <laughs> so let's start where we normally start then guys what have you been up to this week <sighs> kj you want to start <laughs> <laughs> okay if, if you're a, you're a rough one then then i can go yeah i, I uh, since last we spoke i've uh, i've done the last filming for my my next project but i haven't touched a single video file because I'm, i haven't had time to do it so i hope they look good at least, um, yeah. So that's that's something. When are you hoping to get it out? Uh, I was hoping to get it out rather soon, but uh, but considering my track record, it'll probably be at the end of the month or something like that. <laughs> because yeah, time and all of that. Uh, now this this weekend will disappear, and uh, next week I'm doing the pod edit. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably at the end of the month. <laughs> How long does it normally take you to do your editing, KJ? Well, um, it's not that much the editing time itself. Uh, I mean, it takes a couple of hours, but I, I like to to have a rough edit done and then and then wait a wait a while and and looking at it with fresh eyes and then do a re edit and okay. let it let it simmer. Right. So it's. I'm, I I don't think I really could do just take all the clips, 
edit it in one go and then think it's fine and uploading it. I need yeah. I need some time to to contemplate. <laughs> so that's why it, why it takes a while, and then I don't Fair have enough. that much time to do it either. Fair enough. Um, then I have done a, a a thing that will have to be secret uh, until this weekend. Uh, so I won't talk any more about that. And okay. lastly, make a related thing I did was I, I fixed my youngest kid's bed that I accidentally uh, assembled a little bit wrong <laughs> when I did it like one and a half years ago or something like that. So it's been standing on an angle with two of two of the feet not really touching the ground and it, uh, it resting on the, on the drawers under the bed. And I, I couldn't really figure out what I did wrong, but then I actually took the time to take some stuff apart and realized that I put an angle iron upside down. So it's, it's like <laughs> half an inch or something. Uh, the bed slates were on in the wrong position. So that felt really good to, to fix that. <laughs> Do you always revert to imperial measurements when you've done something wrong? <laughs> no, but uh, when I speak English, I, I revert to imperial because <laughs> meters and centimeters that that doesn't ring ring correctly. Uh, okay, so it's easier to use the 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 caveman style of measuring <laughs> using your 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 body. <laughs> what about you, Havard? Your little productive Norwegian, you. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like you've made fantastic projects on the uh, on the Halloween thing. Oh yeah, I uh, two days ago I really I don't know what got into me, but really everything just sorted itself out, uh, and then I realized oh it needs wheels as well, and then just <laughs> ran in and did some CAD drawing. Um, while I did that, I also realized that. Uh, our sanding intern uh, actually was doing a live streaming. So I also bombed his live streaming while I did <laughs> cutting. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, um, yeah, the car is nearly complete. I just need some paint and electrical work. And of course, for those of you who don't know the context, I'm, I'm building a Halloween costume out of the car. Christine from that old uh, horror movie from I think it was 1983 and of course the story is that that car maims everyone that gets in her way and of course I managed to drill myself in the finger I was just hol- <laughs> I was just holding a backing piece and then that realization when you know you've done something stupid, but it's too late, but you know that you know better than this. It's just like, I was holding that piece and I was just going to drill that final hole. And then the drill just went through and I just, you just oh. felt it in your finger and okay, I, I can't look at this. So it's just, <laughs> all right, pull the drill out. And then I went, okay, I need to get the first aid kit. And then of course, oh, the camera is rolling. So I need to go back, turn the camera off (laughs) while not looking at my finger and then getting the first aid kit and then start assessing the damage. But yeah. Getting some good shots. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Luckily, I I did rewatch the the footage afterwards, but (laughs) the hand that I drilled into was covered by the car. So you don't see, well, any blood being drawn, but... uh, it yeah, could have been much been... worse. You could have been driving a screw through. Then you'd have had to have gone to get the first aid kit with the car attached. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, no, I got I got lucky. I didn't hit any major parts, but it 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 really drilled into the finger. So it could have it could have nicked a senior or something, and then really fucking up the finger. So I'm I'm really lucky. <laughs> Was it close to the bone or? Yeah, it's a, it's not much like flesh between the skin and the bone in your thumb. So and the drill went in, so it's it's like scraped the bone and then the tissue, and it it was really nice. So I had to cut cut away some parts and then uh, wrap it together and really disinfect it. And then of course, you want to do a good job disinfecting it, so you really have to get it into the wound to clean it. So that was the worst part. Just like. 
trying to do something while you really don't want to look at what you're doing, but you <laughs> have to because you need to do a thorough job. So uh, I just so, wrap yeah. a piece of kitchen roll around it when I do stuff like that. Yeah, that's usually my uh, well, my go-to method as well. But <laughs> I do have a fairly extensive first aid kit, and then this was really bad, and that drill, and uh, yeah. I needed to disinfect it just to be sure. So was the drill like, okay? Yeah, the drill managed fine. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keeping that, maybe put it on the wall. But yeah, I, I started contemplating the movie and then, all right, she's starting to hurt me and I haven't completed her yet. So it's like, <laughs> is this the project I want to continue? I yeah. think uh, I posted a short and someone said just burn it burn it now <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not a superstitious guy but uh yeah M- made me well, think twice i'm worried by association that uh harm might come to me and kj <laughs> <laughs> so i think they, i was sorry go with kj it's made me think that maybe you we all should build a small prison for our workshops where we put all the tools that have drawn our blood just to be sure that it doesn't happen again and as a punishment and <laughs> to show the other ones that they, they shouldn't mess with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have no tools left to use. <laughs> <laughs> that was my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, it's been a long time since I had a, a mishap like this one. So uh, I have been more cautious coming with age but yeah still i have glips like this one i do how does the finger feel now well it's uh when i bend it now i have a plaster on that allows me to bend it and it doesn't hurt but it feels a bit but it's not the size uh, of a golf ball at least no it's not and of course the while the wound is healing, it also feels a bit tight, but that's normal. Um, yeah. uh, and then I have this, um, every time I, um, I don't know what it's called when you you crack your bones or something when I bend it, and it does that now. Um, it's It has done that before, but not all the time. But since I have the plaster on, it's straight for the majority of the day. So when I first need to bend it, it's like really needs persuasion so it, it feels a bit weird but I, I think it's it's starting to feel like normal again so i don't think i'll be permanently scarred i did a similar thing a while ago with the nail gun holding again like you just holding the back piece and firing some nails in and shot one straight into my thumb <laughs> <laughs> yeah just it's... said oh, oh dash oh blow wrapped it in some kitchen roll and carried on <laughs> i didn't need to make such a performance as you yeah, that's a, that's a thing. You uh, after you wrap it, it's back down in the workshop to complete what you're doing. It's a mental yeah. thing. You can't just leave it there. I mean, yeah. someone needs to do it. <laughs> it was the same when I cut my finger. I went up and got it wrapped, and it looked really nice. And then I went down and, and continued working. You can see in the video how the blood is is building up <laughs> under the plaster and just making the whole thing red. I shouldn't really put any pressure on this. Why am I continue working? <laughs> But I mean, you're stupid, I guess. Starting to sound like a Halloween episode, isn't it? This (laughs) workshop horrors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So was that all of your week, or? Yeah, that's uh, that's, a. I mean, it's uh, enough. That's a a, a quick. That's a quick recap. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, I think it was either last night or the night before, and you'd put a whole lot of stuff out on your story, and it was Christine, Christine, and. The progress was really coming on, and then you started wiring the hell cord. I'm thinking, God damn it, slow down, stop making the rest of us look so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, I had a time slot for the workshop, and then of course, when you put the CNC to work, I like to be around in case it fucks up, which it did. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> broke a <laughs> bit again. Um, all right, I need to get better at the crimping on this. Uh, DuPont connectors for the small wires. I really hate this really thin wire, so I thought, okay, I need to get some practice in before I do the real thing, and yeah, just found some offcuts and <laughs> just started making something. 
Does the CNC realize that it's broken a bit? Or does it happily continue? Oh, it happily continues. <laughs> and this is the funny part because... I think it was last week I broke a two millimeter bit. And then, of course, I broke it in the middle of a, it's basically a scrap piece. And then, of course, there are some metal parts deep within the wood. So, okay, I'm not using that one. So I put it in the pile for throwing out. And yesterday I was making the four wheels for the Christine car. And then I had one wheel left to do and... I started looking through my scrap pile and, ooh, this piece fits beautiful. So I just slapped that on, not realizing that that two millimeter bit that I broke was actually lodged in the wood on the backside. <laughs> and of course, I'm sorry it's laugh. like winning the lottery that I actually hit that small two millimeter <laughs> dot from the other side because now I was using a stronger four millimeter uh, down cut bit and I was just happily just going along and then I heard this tink. <laughs> and then it started moving on much more lightly. And then hmm, this is a different sound. And then, of course, I broke that bit on the other bit that I broke that's lodged from the other <laughs> side. So it's like, uh, should I keep this and put it on the wall? Because this is the <laughs> mother of all fuck ups. <laughs> the double bit breaker. Yeah. Okay. So you should get a metal detector if you get a CNC to find the broken bits. <laughs> yes, you should. And then. Uh, but it should also notice, it shouldn't be an issue to program and put a sensor in that it realizes that, okay, I went from really having some resistance going through a wood and then just no resistance at all. Then it should like, if not stopping, it could give you a hint like something is going on here. You might want to come and check on me. Yeah, after doing like one lap when with no resistance, it really should ask a question. Yeah. And then also, that's a feature that I miss. Uh, and that is, in that case, I could have just stopped uh, the CNC and removed the broken bit, put in a new one and reset the set height and just asked them to continue from that point. But it might be a function, but I haven't figured it out in the software yet. So I have to restart the entire program. So if, if it spent an hour up to that point, I have to yeah. retrace that hour of work without cutting any wood. I have the same problem with the laser. That does exactly the same thing. Yeah. It is a nightmare. <laughs> and another interesting problem or not interesting problem this week with the laser as well. The You know, there's thin metal business cards that I engrave. Yeah. 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 So we had really nice hot weather and through summertime when I first got them and they engraved no problem. And now the weather's gone cold here. So the car the cards in the workshop are freezing cold. You put them underneath the laser and as soon as they warm up they distort. Because of the, <laughs> <laughs> because of the massive yeah, of temperature. Course they do. Yeah. <laughs> they distort, then the laser catches <clears> it and then you end up with all sorts of weird patterns engraving all over the place then you should get a i guessing those are expensive like a big square magnet or something to put them on to help them <laughs> yeah. not distort and also dissipate some of that heat <laughs> well the, yeah the, well, the, the fact of the matter is that i think they're aluminium so they wouldn't work on the magnet yeah and yeah. <laughs> if i just had the common sense to put a bit of blue tape on the corners i think that would probably work the same not for not have a freezing cold workshop. Yeah, that's true. Warm it up before I start. <laughs> like I've said before, though, when, when I'm engraving, you have to have the door open so it doesn't kill you. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, ventilation is what you should get. Yeah. <laughs> Heat and ventilation. Absolutely. <laughs> then again, you could also just put uh, aluminium cards in some lukewarm water for a few minutes, and then you will bring that temperature difference down enough for it not to warp, I guess. God damn you lot on your logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've I've warped a couple of things before, so <laughs> just align the tracks up at the end, warm the cards up beforehand. I mean it's so much easier when you when you watch problems from the outside. Yeah. yeah. Was it... When you're in the middle of And it, in it's... hindsight. <laughs> yeah. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I think last week I was the wise one. What's happened? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we take turns at that. <laughs> oh, fair enough. 
it's quite nice not to have the responsibility all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so how's your the rest of your week been, Glenn? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I got a video out. Yes, you did. Yeah, so I uh, really went for it and um, got the project done, which is uh, some nice new wall storage in my workshop, which I actually love. Yeah, it looks really great. Yeah, yeah. No, it did turn out really nicely. The um, The problem I had, I had to stop myself on Sunday actually making things to fit on the French cleat wall. So you know, I've, made, <laughs> I've made things to hold my glasses. I've got trays up there. I've got you know something to hold the mallets and the chisels. And it was so much fun making these things. I actually had to force myself to stop and actually edit the video. <laughs> I was actually... Uh almost stumbling into another project just looking at your wall because I saw an open space there and I got an idea for what I could fill it with. And then <laughs> I realized, no, no, you have enough projects. Halloween is two weeks away and you're going away next weekend. So no. <laughs> you said it had given you an idea for a project. Yeah. Oh, it was just... Uh some fun gimmicky thing to put up on your wall instead of a sticker. <laughs> okay. Might have been a metal playing instrument of some sort. <laughs> if you want to call it an instrument. <laughs> we'll, not, we'll not go there. <laughs> oh, that would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, but it, it looks really great. And yeah. No offense, but I mean, your walls did need an improvement. Uh, yes. And that was really great one yeah and no, i'm really happy with it um i think um you know there's going to be some additions to it in the future as well yeah i like the contrast it really worked with the the wood and the room i mean it's not it's not too cold but it's, it's still yeah. yeah it's a really comfy space yeah really pleased with how the video came out as well i enjoyed editing it yeah. and enjoyed yeah. making it so I've realized that that if you enjoy editing the video, then the end results is better. I have a couple of videos where I re I remember that <laughs> I didn't really enjoy the editing. It was at some point just <laughs> getting on with it. And looking at those videos in hindsight, mm, it kind of shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just a, it's just a nice uh, video. Actually, I did a... One of my first videos was uh, making a gun stock out of plywood. And I managed to fuck the project up. And then I was editing it and got completely bored of editing it and just kind of ended the video. And it's it's probably one of my best, <laughs> probably one of the best performing videos. <laughs> <laughs> kind of Monty Python style. Yeah. No, this is silly. Move on. Next one. <laughs> yeah, you should do that more. <laughs> Well, as a as a follow up on that, uh, I have spent also some spare time the f few last evenings just moving data onto the new hard drive, and then I stumbled over some old video clips that I have filmed on old cameras and old phones way before I even thought about posting anything on on YouTube, and there was a couple of good memories there, and I thought, ooh. I could make something out of this, but the quality is so bad. It's like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not salvageable. So it's, uh, it is what it is. It feels like one of these, uh, what's it called? Uh, that American TV show where people send in the funniest home videos or something. Oh, in yeah. Real crappy quality. It's like yeah. the content's <laughs> funny, but. Oh, it's, it, it hurts just watching it. <laughs> I mean, you can spin that and have the Mystery Science Theater 2000 or what it was called. Just have a, a game show with you as the host and showing your old clips in a crappy VHS format. I like that because That's I did, really I did, idea. I did think I've done that. A couple of previous times when I needed to reuse old and crappy footage, I converted it to black and white. 
removed the audio. more grain and static. Yeah, and I removed the audio and I did like these silent movie things with this uh, silly music in the background and then the yeah. video. And instead of voiceover, you just have these flashing screens with this old timey text. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that is feeling kind of old. So then maybe I should do a game show. Uh, I need to set up a green screen and get a a silk tuxedo or something and then <laughs> a fake tan and we're on <laughs> oh god yes please welcome to behind the mistakes <laughs> you mean just get the silk tuxedo out of your wardrobe right <laughs> <laughs> i'll bet kj's got one if you haven't <laughs> sorry <laughs> got some images <laughs> I can't get that image out of my head. No. no. <laughs> I'm scarred for life. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We can't revisit it every week, can we? No, no. no. Well, I think uh, so- sometime after Christmas, we'll let it go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, what year? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, today uh, I received in the mail uh, stickers. Oh, they're for, nice for the podcast. Uh, Those were glossy. They are. Yeah, it's not as bad as it looked in the camera. Um, so now uh, this weekend, when this episode comes out, uh, if anyone listens to it and is in Norway, uh, and come and say hi uh, to either me or hard then uh, not me they, they can get one but if you're you, if you're stuck on the <laughs> on the british isles you have to go and find glenn <laughs> <laughs> and that might be harder <laughs> actually i sent our intern a, a little message this week i'm sending him a sticker just because you know you guys are going to be giving stickers out so i thought i want to send one and in some sort of payment to him <laughs> yeah yeah that's good <laughs> so you're looking forward to the weekend yeah most definitely yeah yeah it's gonna be nice um haven't sorted out all of the babysitting yet so i might bring a posse of two very <laughs> eager and enthusiastic uh, shop assistants <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that will be nice well love the stickers oh yeah <laughs> that's uh Stickers are the rage in our house. It's like uh, they're sticking them everywhere. And I just thought that, all right, in their own rooms, they can do whatever they want, draw on the walls and everything. I don't, well, we don't encourage it, but I don't get mad about it. It's like, it's their room. It's going to look trash for years. And then we do a remodel when they're grown up. Yeah. Uh, And then, of course, they found my sticker stash and then i came uh, home one day and look dad and he like <laughs> plastered all over the place and, like crap <laughs> <laughs> so you got to order some more stickers now then <laughs> yeah um i was looking into getting one with also the qr code but i haven't found a way of I want the logo and the QR code to be on one sticker, but I want there to be a cut line around both of them. So if you don't want to keep the QR code, you can just peel off the other one and use that one. But I haven't found a a sticker supplier that provide that. I saw that one. One thing about you can have a have a print on the on the back side of the sticker or or on the this the side that it's it's sticking on, so to say. So when you remove the sticker, you can actually have a picture underneath it. Ooh, that so was that cool. Could be a place to to put a QR code code, uh, unless you do it like I do, where I don't actually put my stickers on something. I stick uh, um, stick sticky magnet tape on the backside instead. <laughs> <laughs> on the sticker, so all my maker stickers uh, are are still stickerable. Is that the word? I mean, you can still peel them off and put them on something if you would like. Uh, well, is this in I, case I, you go off people? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to be modular if I stop yeah. hating someone. Like... Unsubscribe, yeah. <laughs> remove sticker. Yeah. <laughs> but you had me at magnet tape. Of course that exists, but I have not known that until right now. And that's amazing. I could use that for a lot of things. Yeah, I, I actually buy them in these sheets. Like... Yeah, like a postcard size. Yeah, you can use. Uh, I have a box of old floppy drives, so I'm gonna make some uh, separation uh, sheet uh, wall hangers. So uh, that would be nice. <laughs> it's really great for if you want to do custom fridge magnets or something like that. Just take a, a normal photograph and just slam it on. Great <laughs> gifts for grandparents and that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a vinyl cut cutter or do you do all your cutting manually? I do all my cutting manually, sadly. Yeah. Oh, that's Ooh. my compressor. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't lie when he said he had a noisy <laughs> <laughs> compressor. I think mine's noisy. Hang on, let me just go and turn it on. <laughs> uh. So it's been looking a bit exciting at your house today, Havard. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, well, everything, when it rains, it pours. Um, yesterday, uh, I got a phone call from the contractor that we were hired to do some digging uh, in our yard. And he said, well, uh, the other job got postponed, so I'm ready tomorrow. <laughs> so today he showed up with a big lorry and a excavator and started digging. So... I also stayed at home being like a supervisor. <laughs> so, yeah. So what, then, what's, um, what's all that in aid of? Are they just leveling out some ground? Uh, no, we actually... Uh, the local municipality have changed out all the piping uh, in our neighborhood. And then, of course, we got the notice for... Yeah, within the next year, we need to change from the old system to the new system. And then, of course, on your own property, you are responsible to do that switch. So we have spent, yeah, half a year talking to different contractors and so on. The price varies a lot. Um, but we found one that's uh, doing a decent job. So he's just going to, first of all, start by digging a trench for putting the new pipes in. And then we thought, well, we were thinking about in the future putting up an external garage and then we asked him how much extra to remove some moss and then prepare the ground for uh, like a socket for a garage or something. And uh, yeah, he gave a decent price. So we thought, well, let's go ahead. Excellent. New workshop begins. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm calling it a, a garage uh, for my <laughs> wife, but we'll see. <laughs> does, your, does your wife listen to the podcast? <laughs> Unfortunately... Yeah, and she also <laughs> she also sees my uh, stories on Instagram, so uh, <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exciting. When do you think uh, the new garage will be going up? Oh, that's uh, that's a whole different ball game. I'm not sure. Um, we might start something next year, but we also need to change the roof on the the house which is also a cost so it might be a couple of years in the making realistically right. fair enough i have to yeah. apologize if you're picking up any background noise we've got storm babette going over us at the moment and it's beating ah. down on the flat roof above me is that what it is i thought <laughs> does glenn have a dog or something sneaking around in the background or... <laughs> no dave's locked up nicely in the house i'm in the workshop and it's, it's absolutely pissing it down outside <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so, how about you guys? Any excitement except hiding from the weather? No, that's basically it. Oh, no, today was, there wasn't any weather to hide from. It was actually a quite pleasant day, I would say. Uh, I, I actually got to be outside a bit uh, when I'm not when I wasn't trapped on a train. That is. <laughs> The one-hour commute to work took three hours, and 
re didn't really get me to the office. So yeah, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't you miss uh, public commute and uh, going to an office? I mean, you you drive around to all your gardens instead. <laughs> when you posted that story, actually, on uh, Instagram, I was 10 minutes away <laughs> in a lovely garden. And all we had at that time was wind, not rain. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, every time I have an office or commute problem now, I, I think about you. <laughs> <laughs> You think about all the horrible names you call me. In. <laughs> yeah, but but I also think think about you when it's uh, pissing down rain and, uh, yeah. and the wind is storming. So it's it, it balances out. Well, the, the truth of it is, KJ, when it's pissing it down with rain and storming, I'm actually normally at home in my workshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but I can... Uh, he yeah. still is going to be thinking about you, but in completely <laughs> different thoughts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think back to uh, when I worked as a gardener uh, on a cemetery. So yeah. go back to the, <laughs> the subject. Yeah. I mean, we can just as well lean into it at this point. I mean, yeah. the, the topic is given itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but that I, I remember it uh, when the the weather was really bad. It was just you you felt the workload stacking up because. The lawns had to be nice for Sunday service. So then you know, yeah. okay, if I can't mow it on Wednesday, I have to mow it on Thursday. Can I, if I can't do it on Thursday, I have to do it on Friday. Can do it on Friday and <laughs> Saturday perhaps? And how far can you push it? And and that sort yeah. of thing. So, that yeah, was... and you had a literal deadline. I mean, <laughs> I mean, people were dying for your work to be completed. <laughs> yeah, in some cases, that was actually true. I only, I only dug a handful of graves, but yeah, that was uh, not a deadline. Well, that actually is no, that's too weird. But to to be on a bucket list, that is. But to actually have dug a physical grave for someone, that that's something to have on your resume, I think. Yeah, yeah. I've um, dug a few graves for customers' dogs before. But the strangest one is there's a customer I used to work for, not anymore. They had a couple of Labradors. One passed away. And she said, would you you know, dig a, dig a hole for the dog? I said, yeah, no problem. And she said, we, we literally buried the dog. And then the next week I was there, she said, the other one's looking a bit poorly. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you just want to dig one ready? You know, just in case it happens when you're not here. And so... <laughs> So I, I dug the grave, uh, and that poor dog walked past that grave for three months before it passed away. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, and it lived for like five years. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, well, you have a shovel, can't you do something about it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's just sad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, d I don't remember which comic who said it, but it's like he was digging a hole and he realized this is bloody hard work. I mean, how did they even do it without an excavator? And then he started realizing why they find all these dead people in shallow graves all over the world. <laughs> because, I mean, you're digging the most important hole in your life and you just you come like 30 centimeters down and oh this is enough and then <laughs> just <laughs> sprinkle some soil over your victim and then <laughs> pray to god that not a dog owner on a stroll is gonna find them. <laughs> uh, uh, i really don't know where to go from here <laughs> i've got a, a subject right down on that's what you get for not scripting anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is probably a little bit too much of a tangent, but um, so over the, since I met KJ, I've been saying he's been doing videos, and you you know when you've done a few videos, you see little excerpts which would make a good short or a reel. And so I've been pestering KJ to why don't you do this bit as a short? Do that one. Go on, do this one. Yeah, like the costume change would have made it just a great short all on its own. 
So KJ, what is your problem with shorts? Yeah, yeah, that's a. They're that easy to it. make. They're easy to edit. <laughs> yeah, but I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. This I, I don't really know why, but I have. It, it's, it's. I think it's. It's the feeling that they clog up the the feed. And I, I, every time I see, oh, this person has made a new video, oh, it's just a short. And then I get disappointed. <laughs> and there's something about vertical video that I, I, really, I really can't get around it. Yes. It's, it's, I think it's, <laughs> the, the world is in, is in landscape, not a portrait, because our eyes are, are not above each other. So it feels wrong, I feel. And... Yeah, and I don't know. I just had some kind of allergic reaction to it early on, and then I just don't want to do it. <laughs> and then it would have been a pet peeve of mine instead. Yeah. And I, I, I quite prefer the Instagram way where you have the the 24-hour cycle and just you can throw stuff up and it doesn't really matter. But yeah, if I would do something for YouTube, then... I feel like I would have to put more effort into it and make it something special that would actually be a a short, a, be a thing. And if I want to do a short video, then I, I could make it just a short actual video instead. <laughs> but you do, you have done reels before. Yeah, but... It's just, it's just a short with a different name, surely. Yeah, but... <laughs> But they also, that is, I think it's, it's a, it comes down to at the bottom line that all my content that I do, I more or less do for myself or, mm -hmm. or someone else who is like me. I, I am the main uh, audience and yeah. if someone else likes, but I like fine, nice, uh, and I don't watch any shorts. No. Uh, apart from YouTube and uh, uh, what's she called? Uh, someone to do uh, a fantasy uh, writer thing. That's the only only four sources of, of shorts that I actually watch. I just skip past them. I <laughs> I don't go near them. So okay. So. So then I, I feel like it's not my territory because I don't watch them, so I don't really know them. And I, I stay away from TikTok and yeah, and all of that as well. You've so, missed so many funny animal videos, though, haven't you? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably not aware that the internet is actually built around cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm allergic, so... <laughs> Ah, that's the explains it, yeah. <laughs> but I agree, although I do post shorts, but that's also because when I do the reels for Instagram, it's like, it's there. So it says, all right, I'll post it to TikTok, I'll post it to Schmick Schmuck, Bunny, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever's out there. That you're making. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna wake up tomorrow and that's a new thing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but what really annoys me is and i agree with the fact that um shorts clutter up my youtube page because i scroll past them as well and then um, if i could filter them out that would be nice because on youtube i'm only there for the long form content and then on Instagram, there's a different thing. Uh, I also miss that you on Reels could put in links to other platforms, other videos, because a lot of the makers do this. They post long form videos on YouTube and then they use Instagram and other platforms for just snapshot from the workshop during the build, just to give people teasers and some insight into the process. And then, of course, now that uh, all the platforms are built up like that, they also favor you if you post regularly and often. So then many people are forced into posting reels and shorts 
just to keep the system happy while you're actually making the product that you want to make. And I think that's more problematic because if the platforms could realize that, okay, I'm this kind of platform, but, but I could also allow for people to link it to another platform and then you could make a, I don't even know what's the word for it, like a symbiotic partnership across the platforms that would be beneficial for everyone. But now everyone's just striving to keep the people on their own platform. And that's yeah. of course, because they're selling the data and the ads and so on. They don't want people to leave. Yeah. But I mean, in the YouTube sense, you're not leaving because you are watching Instagram and YouTube in parallel. It's not like you're ditching that for something else. It's like, it's not like old time television shows that if you go to channel four, then you're leaving BBC one behind or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. because I, I really use the doubtless differently. I, 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 I can't, I, I don't sit, sit around watch to watch long form on, on Instagram or I don't, read long post i i skip skip from he here to there i mean it's like if i have two minutes i'll check instagram if i have 10 minutes i go to youtube because youtube that's long format instagram is short <laughs> yeah and the, and the thing that i previously used instagram for that was when you have the the open unbiased feed because it was just an endless array of things that people around the world posted at any given time. So you can stumble onto something that, what the fuck was that? And then, <laughs> ooh, that was kind of cool. And then you discovered something new. When I go to Instagram now, it's two thirds advertisements, which the systems then try to make fit into who they think I am. And then the rest of the posts, are then buried and they are also even the people that I'm following the system is screening what they are posting to what they think I would like to see and I do like watching other woodworkers do woodworking stuff but sometimes I like to get new inputs to spark the creativity and I don't feel I get that on Instagram anymore so it is mainly something that I just fill dead time with between everything else. And I'm trying to become better to then just putting my phone down and actually smelling the flowers instead, because that gives me greater pleasure than uh, doom scrolling on the phone. <laughs> but it is highly addictive. I'll admit to that. It's hard it putting your phone down. It's true that it's not really that inspirational in that sense instagram is more like keeping tabs on what your friends are doing yeah and i i mostly the first thing i do is is uh, switch to following so i just see the people i'm following and that makes it even worse in that sense <laughs> you don't get any that much new things then yeah i think instagram's you know just a really nice way to keep in contact with you not so real world friends. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> all the imaginary friends. Yeah, all your imaginary friends. I think it, you know it's nice. It's well, it's it's a way of keeping up with your friends who have the the very same interests that you have, isn't it? Yeah. Because your, your friends in real life don't generally share, or mine don't don't share my interests or my interests. That's for sure. So I think it's a nice way. It's a good way to message other people as well. So I, I quite like Instagram for that. Going back to the um, the shorts and the reels, I mean, I think me and Havar generally make shorts and reels from our long to our long form videos. The little excerpts from that. So, for instance, the the video I put out at the weekend, the pegboard part of it, the jig that I made that became my short and my reel. So that's the that's the way I I generally see that. And then sometimes, you know, when it's you know, I'm making, I made a wooden spoon. I wanted to share it. I enjoyed editing and it wasn't worthy of more than a 30 second video. So <laughs> yeah, I quite like them for that. I do, but I do like watching them as well. I'm not, my um, attention span's gone 
you know, very much down over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be an avid reader. I can't even look at a book now. <laughs> well, it's um, books are different. I I do enjoy to read, but it is I need to find the time. I mean, for me to read, I need a set amount of time just yeah. to sit down and get into it. Yeah. I need to have a comfortable chair and it needs to be the right surroundings because I'm not the one who can sit down and read a book in a public train because it's too much distractions and yeah, I really right. want to enjoy what I'm reading. So then, of course, after getting kids, the <laughs> although you are home, it's it's never quiet. And then, of course, in the evening, if I try to sit down and read a book, I'm asleep after two sentences. So it's so I think there's a period in my life now that I still keep buying books with the intention of reading them, but I'm really lagging behind on yeah. <laughs> actually yeah, completing too. them. Yeah, I I I I am I'm a hundred percent train reader because I can't stand people. So I just plug in my he headphones and listen to some music that preferably don't have any lyrics or something that I, I easily can tune out. So with background noise, and then I disappear in a book and then it's like time travel. I get to the destination really fast. <laughs> uh, and then I read, uh, I read myself to sleep, as you said. And sometimes it's two sentences. And sometimes when I've accidentally had a nap in the evening, then <laughs> I can read for hours instead and don't get any sleep at all that night. But my wife is, is really different in that sense. When she's reading a good book, when I, I'm, I'm just going to uh, go go fetch uh, the tea that's ready in the kitchen. And I come back to the living room and she's had like 30 seconds and she's opened her book and reading like three paragraphs or something like yeah. that. But for me, that's that's not enough. I, I can't really remember where I was and getting, to the, getting into the groove. And then I want to stay in that groove. It's not not enough to read for half a minute, but for her that's that's fine in some weird way. I used to be okay with that. I wouldn't start a book unless I'd got two to three days to commit to it. You know, around my normal working life that is, and then every spare moment I got, I would open it, even if it was just for thirty seconds. You know, a quick tea break, whatever. That's when I would that's when I'd get my reading in. But I couldn't I couldn't do it with music in my ears or distractions going on around me at all. I need complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that sounds really nice with complete silence, but then, <laughs> then you can hear your own thoughts. <laughs> if you're reading. Never silent. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing that fascinates me the most. Uh, my wife, wife works in publishing, so she reads a lot of books on her own initiative, but she reads a lot of them in parallel at any given time. And then, of course, it's the screening of manuscripts uh, through her work and so on. And then, of course, it's the various stages of actually making a book. So you have quality control and whatnot. So she reads a lot. And then, of course, in different stages and in parallel. I, I couldn't read two books in parallel because I would fuck up the timelines in both of those. <laughs> so yeah. I need to have one book and follow that storyline. But that might also be how my brain works i use a lot of time on a book because i'm not just reading the text As, for an example if i'm reading lord of the rings and there's a segment there of them like walking through a, a wood nothing much happening at that given time i can actually stop reading and then just visualize maybe a 10 15 second like video in my head of them walking around in the forest and then I start picking up reading and then just moving the storyline and then if and that's maybe special for books that are written very well in describing the nature and yeah. so on because I get really into it and then I start making all these sequences to actually supplement the book and then trying to read two different books with that kind of brain, it would really screw up the... Or maybe that would be cool. If you have the two right books, you would actually end up in your head with a hybrid. Nice so mashup. It, uh... So it's a 
could I combine like Mark Twain with uh, like uh, the Matrix? Nineteen eighty-two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or is or is it? <laughs> Oh, The Matrix and Guardians of the Galaxy. What a great book. (laughs) (laughs) I think I perhaps, I never tried it, but I think I could manage if there were two very different books, like one fantasy, one sci-fi, which is what I intend to to read, the thing I mostly read. Because I have that with, with TV series, that... I try to to keep it that we're watching one sci-fi, one fantasy, and one normal, so to say, at the same mm-hmm. time, and, and switching up one every third evening or something like that, the episodes, because I, I don't want multiple fantasy series at the same time, because mm-hmm. then it's a little bit too too much sword and sorcery, and you have to remember what's the difference. But if one is one is swords and dragons and the other ones is blasters and spaceships then it's then i can keep it apart yeah i can't commit to a series nowadays either i won't i won't commit to something that draws me in at the same time every week apart from this podcast <laughs> are, we, are we your only commitment <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Just don't say that to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late unless you edit this out. Of all. She's already heard. <laughs> well, if you yeah. want to have an open relationship, I'm I'll uh, I'll edit it out, okay? But I'll send that specific clip to her <laughs> just as a teaser. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what you got to say about this? <laughs> I can make her do a comment on uh, <laughs> like a voiceover for the podcast. <laughs> Yes, splice that in here, Ruth. <laughs> Comment from the wife. That should be a new segment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let's not let's not give the wives a voice on here. <laughs> They're already pulling the strings behind the background wow. in the background. <laughs> well, I'm I'm hoping for a spin-off series with just our wives. Yeah. I think that'd be great. That's the worst part, isn't it? To make your wives as a podcast, they would annihilate us. I mean, that, yeah, that, that, yeah. that would be so popular, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Them just talking about what we do in, or what they think we do in the garage <laughs> and workshop. Oh, I mean, no. I mean... <laughs> Mine's been uh, researching uh, YouTube algorithms and things like that <laughs> <laughs> just lately. <laughs> Today she's saying... Um, you know, you need to do a, another another workshop video to follow that one up to play the algorithm. And I said, do you not want me to build a toilet? She said, oh, no, I want you to make the toilet as well downstairs, but you've still got to do a video for the workshop as well. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's nice to have a team where you actually have one that's uh, doing all the algorithm research for you, but... Uh... <laughs> I'm still back on, I need to do the things that pop into my head. If I'm going to try and chase that algorithm, I'm going to make a channel that's basically like a million other channels. And I don't, I don't want to watch that. And I don't expect, or the people who want to watch that, I don't want to interact with. (laughs) Because I, I really (laughs) like the, the people who are actually in and commenting. So I think that's, maybe half the fun of actually posting a video because I now kind of know which one's going to be commenting first. And it's like, I'm sitting there waiting, just (laughs) and playing back and forth. So yeah, maybe one should look into that community tab. How did you feel about that before you got your 25 meter swimming badge before you got monetized? Well, it, well, before that, it, it happened so fast because of the Hell Quarter video. So yeah. before that, it was basically just friends and family. Yeah. So um, we interact on other platforms. So they, they don't comment on the videos. They just tell me straight to my face. Oh, I love what you did there. <laughs> yeah. um, Is that really what they tell you? <laughs> uh, to my face, yeah. yeah. What, <laughs> <laughs> what, what numbers did you... A number of subscribers did you go from 
when that headquarter jump occurred? Oh, I think... Uh, I don't think I was past 200. It was insane. I think it jumped 12, 1300 subscribers over two days. Cool. And it How didn't did happen... Check? And didn't uh, happen right away either. I just put the video out and it was a week and I was working with something else. And then I just woke up one day and I saw that notification icon from YouTube. And then like, there's been some action on this video and I just opened it and holy shit, it's passed like <laughs> 80, 90,000 views in the last 48 hours or something. And But it was a nice ride to see that peak because you also had a lot of people commenting on that video specific and i had the time to comment and follow up and all the hilarious comments i, I actually saved some of them for later references because <laughs> there are a lot of creative people out there in the comments <laughs> <laughs> but that being said i think i said it earlier i only deleted one comment which i found inappropriate everything else has been just uh what Grass and coming? sunshine. I mean, we, we don't want to know the nice ones. We only want to know the inappropriate one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't even remember. And it wasn't like bad or anything. It was just like like bad taste on right. something that nobody should have to read this. I just deleted it. It wasn't like a... Yeah. <laughs> That's the good thing about being smaller channels as we are. That's it's only the only nice people who actually care to care to watch and comment. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah but that's a, that's a, comment. that's the fun part because I don't get it. If you if you're leaving a nasty comment because you don't like it, then all right, you can press the thumbs down, and then the algorithm will not show that to you anymore. And that's it. Why spend the time? writing a negative comment to someone i mean how lousy is your day and what they don't realize is that that interaction actually helps boost the video so they're yeah. actually helping me <laughs> and i know a couple of youtubers that really lean into answering up the mean comments just to like get the like the steam going because well it will drive the video <laughs> <laughs> How did you um, how did you feel when your video was blowing up when the Hellcord video was blowing up? I was when my Strumstick video it was quiet for a week, and then over the next week it did I think twenty thousand views, and then it's just been climbing steadily ever since. But you know slowly, but I, yeah. I felt really panicked when it was blowing up, and I don't know why I couldn't explain it. Well, it was it was brilliant. It was a real fun week. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, I'm guessing it's a bit like drugs. You're on a high and then it starts yeah. leveling out. And then yeah. you answered all the comments and then you log on to the next day and, well, no more comments. <laughs> and you're realizing it's it's not the the lack of people who might want to watch it, but it's just that the algorithm, for some reason, just fades it out because there's an endless stream of other things it need to to promote. So, of course you're left with that thought is if they just let it go for a couple of more days, how would you have reached a larger audience? Because it is really fun to, to get those few people that you interact with. And some of them are also other YouTubers. So you actually make a relation there and meet new people, which is nice. But then I also have, it doesn't have the same numbers, but the most consistent video was the one I did where I uh, I stated that the Ray-Ban uh, sunglass cases are rubbish and I made my own in leather. And that's the one that's just racking up numbers, not huge numbers, but consistently. So over time, that just keeps growing. For some odd reason, I haven't done much leather work and I don't post or talk anything and I don't seek out leather working videos, but that one just keeps rolling 
And I don't know what it is, if it has Ray-Ban in the title or if it's the word rubbish or I don't know. <laughs> I haven't dug into it. It's probably worth figuring out. Yeah, so my next video is going to be a rubbish Ray Ban uh, <laughs> yeah. ba- banjo builder. <laughs> I, I just... <laughs> KJ, were you ever attempted to do another your, your pocket hole jig was your big, biggest video, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah it's... You ever attempted to do another jig or anything like that to try and replicate it? I, I mean, I, I don't really... I, 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 it was weird when it when it took off. I mean, that's the 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 only one of my videos that's in uh, five figures. It's thirty three thousand at the moment, slowly, slowly climbing. And I, when it took off, I I, I get, actually got kind of scared because I had, <laughs> didn't understand why why on earth would anyone want to watch this crappy thing. And then I. Yeah, I'm the pocket hole guy now. <laughs> yeah, I do not want to be the pocket hole guy. I mean, that's not a video I, I like either. That was one of those is throw away for a challenge video. I just took it as an except from uh, from another video. You did actually shoot it very nicely though that video. And it was something I didn't really care about. So yeah, it's, but you, you yeah. shot it from you just got different angles and you got it was a nice little video. So. Yeah, but I, I found that it's on some kind of uh, woodworker uh, jig playlist amongst like 20 other pocket hole jig videos. Right. For some reason, middle-aged men in America watched that playlist <laughs> over and over again. It, I don't know, it's some bot farm or something to that. <laughs> Because, and it feels so weird when you look at the analytics, but oh, it says it has thirty three thousand seven hundred and seventy three views. That's thirty three thousand six hundred more than usual. But yeah, <laughs> thanks. I, I know, I know that I'm on the hundred bracket. That's a normal thing. I know this one is an absurd mutant. Thank you, YouTube analytics. <laughs> So, Havard, if the Hellcorder, the new Hellcorder video takes off the same way as the last one did, are you just you going to just be doing Hellcorders for the rest of your days? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well... With bits I mixed have, in in between. That's, that's the thing. It, I'm not anticipating that video to go as viral as the first one, because that was probably just a stroke of uh, dumb luck. And so the the next video is it's going to be a better video. Uh, the second hell quarter iteration is going to be better, but yeah. it will probably do a lot worse when it comes to the numbers. But what really is fun now is the few people that actually are really invested in it, yeah, and following along. And I'm doing it for me as well. But then you have a, a squad of few people that really not only cheer you on, but also pitch in ideas, really good ideas, and actually also offer to help. Uh, since I don't like programming and that stuff, uh, there are some electrical engineers out there. So, oh, I'll gladly do it. Just uh, give me a task description <laughs> and okay, cool. So that, that's the kind of people that you really enjoy meeting through project like those. And then, of course, I can see myself just adding things to the hell quarter for eternity. I mean, it's it's limitless in that way. So it, at some point, I will finish it, and then I will probably get an idea. Ooh, wouldn't that be a cool addition? And then I can use that as a, an excuse to either get a new tool or try out a new skill or something. Suddenly, I probably would like to have something water cooled and I need to have a lot of uh, like copper piping uh, stuff and see through glass and maybe it would be a combined aquarium. I don't know. It's I mean, the possibilities are endless, but it looks nice. It, it, yeah. it will make for decent stickers and a T-shirt on Maker Fairs and so on. So I'm going to milk it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, recorders come in lot of different sizes so yeah it could be an entire farm of <sighs> but that's that's still haunting me um <laughs> my my father was a sailor in his uh, younger years and he bought a lot of things around the world which he brought home and one of those were this huge ass base 
uh, recorder flute. And I just hung on the wall as a curiosity uh, at our home my entire childhood. And then, of course, when he passed away and we were just going through everything, what do we keep, what do we just give away, I gave that away. Uh, oh, with my no. sister's consent, we just uh, put it at a thrift shop or something, just gave it away. And now, of course, I'm thinking I could have a single bass recorder with uh, like some pneumatics or something operating all the valves and putting an Arduino on it. I see people have done similar things. And if I go online to see what I will actually have to pay to get even a <laughs> crappy one, they are expensive. And I'm just, yeah. fuck, I gave one away. Oh, no. <laughs> so that's, a, that's an annoying part, but yeah. <laughs> that feeds the hoarder in you to never let anything go. Yeah. <laughs> That being said, I think those hoarder shows are brilliant because if I haven't seen those, I would probably incline to keep a lot more. But that scary yeah. <laughs> picture of yourself sitting in a pile of crap is like, mm, no, really yeah. don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. I worked in the elderly elderly care where you went home to old people and and did their cleaning and that sort of thing, and we had some. We had some some problems in that area, and that I think got me on the on the on the right side of the hoarder line, so to say. I can <laughs> I can yeah. keep I can be a functioning hoarder. It's really hard, though, isn't it, from the maker perspective, when you see something, you think, oh, that that might come in useful one day, and yeah, no, but I've not got space to store it, but I want it, <laughs> but I've not got space to store it. What do I do? <laughs> That's yeah, the thing. I, I, I got. A, I I got inspired by, well, as uh, many makers, I guess, Mythbusters was a, a pivoting show in my, well, childhood or adolescence or what you call it. But like the see-through boxes on the wall, the <laughs> Jamie Heinemann system of storage, I instantly fell in love with that and I've copied it. So I have that in my workshop and it's labeled various knickknacks and, and so on. And I could see myself if I just had enough space, I would just keep adding to that endlessly. If you have the, the closing scene of one of the Indiana Jones movies where they put the ark into that big warehouse. I could yeah. easily have yeah. one of those, but in see-through boxes. And of course, you would need a system of filing everything, but I, I wouldn't do that. I would just instantly know, oh, I put some felt clippings here in a medium-sized box. So just uh, let me use three days digging it out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line the inside of a drawer or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have that uh, a, a version of that system, a small version of that. Um, so yeah, I'm totally on board with see-through boxes are because then it's not lost in a, a in an invisible drawer. Then you actually can see it. <laughs> I suppose the dream system for you two then would be like an Amazon-based warehouse, wouldn't it? All computerized, where a robot just you type it into the computer what you want, and the robot just goes and fetches it. Yeah, but that's the problem. You you need to put a lot of work into filing it the right yeah. way, so that's something. But then again, these we days, have got an you... <clears throat> that's correct. And I also <laughs> thinking with AI now, you could just probably just place the box on a conveyor belt, and it it would scan it and catalog everything for you. So you just put it there, and zoop, it goes away, and then. You can just go into a system. I need uh, three square feet of uh, something rather, and then it says, Zoop, "There it is." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think th those robots in the Amazon w warehouses they t take up too much space. I wouldn't like that. You, you, ha you have to give them so much room to to walk <laughs> around and actually find things. If it's not the those really scary cube versions, the three D storage. We have yeah. things going in, in three directions. That just takes up a lot of space, and a human can't really go in there because it's all, all made for robots. But a big warehouse would be nice. Uh, yeah. But going back to how to keep your hoarding in check, for me, it's, it's how easy can I replace this? 
is the is the number one thing because yeah this is a, a really it's a it's a good it's a good plank yeah but it's just it's just pine it's nothing nothing special i can buy this for this amount okay so that's what it's worth uh but if i oh this is a really nice uh, when you go the the lara kamp way of finding a, a nice industrial lamp okay this is really hard to find if i would search to find it on ebay i would like have to pay 500 quid for it okay this is worth saving because it's hard to come by so i have a lot of no not a lot of but i have some shelf space that it's filled with stuff that i easily could get rid of if i find something cooler yeah so it's a, a constant <laughs> moving stuff closer to the door and maybe out the door i i feel i'm at a sweet spot in some weird maker of Venn diagram because um, in this region around Oslo, of course, it's the place where we have the most people. And uh, then we have uh, various uh, online marketplaces where they give things away. So for a maker, that is really good. If I need something, uh, parts or anything, then I just search there and most likely you will find something that you can use to keep your cost down. I mean, I'm fairly certain you can get like a, a free organ or something if that was something you were into. <laughs> like a, uh, a liver or a kidney. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then of course you have the, uh, I have one of those big warehouses close by that still sells you nuts and bolts by weight so you can actually get three of those and five of that one because i need that specifically but it is rather expensive living here so if i moved back to the smaller community where i come from i could probably get a medium-sized farm for the price of, of a house here but then you would be so far away from everything that i had probably had to buy everything and get it shipped online and you are robbed of that possibility of just go browsing in the shelves and then of course having less people around you not very much is given away and people in the 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 boonies so to speak we, we, we are more utilitarian so we don't give things away if you have place to keep it then oh, i'll probably use that for something later so there, there's a sweet spot there, and uh, with regards to people giving away stuff that's our cool basis for various projects, I, I feel that I'm right where I should be. But then, of course, I can't afford getting a huge workshop, so that's the downside, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there's always something. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a really big space at... Uh... And we mentioned it when we talked about workshops. Um, so I've got two meters by three meter space at the back side of my uh, workshop where I keep my work stuff and my other hobbies. And one of my other hobbies takes up a, a whole wall of space. And, you know, I'm not doing it so much nowadays because I enjoy doing this. <laughs> and I'm thinking, should I get rid of that? Or maybe one day I'll I'll get back into that and I'll, then I'll regret it. <laughs> Yeah, but I think you have a good thing going with that uh, public uh, graffiti uh, hidden persona <laughs> thing. So I don't think you should completely. I mean, you can scale it down, of course, but... If I could just stick to a few prime colors and have <laughs> all the different shades. Yeah. It's the bloody scaffolding that really takes up the room, you know, for those higher jobs. <laughs> 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 yeah I, I still think that's the best intro to a podcast ever <laughs> it's a shame only two people <laughs> listen to it <laughs> uh, it's that, that's the that's the brilliance of it it's like uh, it's a hidden gem in the large ocean of uh, pebbles <laughs> <laughs> I only discovered I mainly discover most of the podcasts when they're at least 40 episodes in. I um, I discovered the Garage Avengers uh, podcast, uh, Making Dreams Reality, I think it is, or Making Things Reality. Ideas Reality. Yeah. 
and um, I discovered that when it yeah. actually it stopped recording. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's yeah. a nice thing. Yeah, that's about a bummer it. when you you find something and <laughs> oh, it's already over. That's uh Yeah, I, I didn't know that podcast until today. I, I follow him and have interacted uh, here and there, but I didn't know about the podcast, so yay for the algorithm, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really I'm disappointed at the algorithms. They they don't really do their job. I don't know. I never blame the algorithm for my videos doing crap. I always just blame my crap videos for doing crap. <laughs> I blame the algorithm for everything that's going on the internet. <laughs> it's like cursing I mean, God. It would... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but that being said, it's it's not good for you because you it's by chance and there's a system that is rigged and it's really, it's not open. So you can't really pinpoint what it is. And then of course, if a video does bad, it's like, okay, maybe it wasn't that good. And then the reality might be that it's a really good video that a lot of people enjoy. They just haven't gotten it presented to them. So it gives you false feedback. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to get feed constructive feedback that, okay, but if you did this, this would be better if it's audio, if it's lighting, if it's this uh, script wise or, or something like that. If I get like, constructive feedback, which I can use to be better in whatever I do, I welcome that. But the feedback and do you get views and likes or not, that's not worth shit, basically. And of course, you can have a really crappy video and it get a lot of likes because it's just being shown to a demographic that really don't think they just oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe s stereotyping. But uh, yeah, I'll take the likes. They make me feel good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should we uh, think about wrapping it up, boys? Or you got anything else to say? Well. We have a we have a good hour and we have thirty minutes from last night. So <laughs> yeah, should, yeah, be enough. Enough. should be enough to slice into something. Absolutely, you know, completely gibberish. Hey, we've not done a we've not done a proper outro either, boys. That was it, wasn't it? <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> That's your choice. <laughs> you just you say, well, should we call it an evening? <laughs> That's that. <laughs> the end. <laughs>